Welcome to episode 68 of Shane Talks. It's the summer blockbuster memories. We're going to take a trip down memory lane this week. Uh, we're going to look at summer blockbusters uh, over the last couple of generations. As always, I am joined by Jason L. Mayer, greatest co-host in the history of podcasting. Oh, and our stop it. all-time favorite guest to the show, Jason Richardson. Welcome back, man. I'm really excited to have you on this episode. I know it was a last-minute thing when I hit you up this morning, so I'm glad your schedule was open. You were available to do it because uh, from the community talking on the Facebook group, you had a lot to say, and I'm excited for you to bring that to the uh, audio version of the episode. So uh, first and foremost, uh, I want to I want to address the film that uh, created the summer blockbuster, and that was it's it's Jaws. And actually, the three of us not too long ago, maybe like six months ago, had a conversation last summer when I re well, I guess it's been a year ago now because I think I rewatched it last summer when I rewatched Jaws, and it just didn't hold up in my opinion of a summer blockbuster. Um, it was a hundred million dollar movie, but it's also really kind of slow. And so, like, what I expect from a summer blockbuster, uh, we'll get to when we start talking about 80s summer blockbusters. Um, Jason Richardson, when Jaws came out, what was your feelings about it? Man, you're trying to act like he was fully aware of things back in the day. Like, I, was, I was too. <laughs> oh, good point. Was, okay, my bad. I was, okay, I was two. I was okay. Two you remember call. when you were two and watching Jaws in the movie theater? Yeah. I was good I call. Was, good call. I was two. I don't. I, I never. I didn't see Jaws in the theaters back in the in the mid seventies. Um, but it's one of those things where, like, a lot of times older films. It, you had to be in the moment back in the day. And so back then it was a big deal and it really kind of created this fear wave through people of like, you know, questioning going into the water, the ocean, you know? And so imagine, you know, being in 1975, that period going to see this movie and everyone's talking about it, everyone's terrified. And they're like questioning, even going back into the waters and stuff how kind of cool and fun that would have been to have kind of lived or experienced that back then. And over time, as you watch it, you can kind of see maybe it doesn't have the intensity that it had back then with those folks, you know? Sure. Uh, but still, what a great film, though. It is, it is still a good film. I don't want to downplay, like, how good of a movie it is. But, like, when I think of summer blockbusters, I obviously think of, like, Michael Bay movies and like big Will Smith movies and stuff like that. So a kid from the nineties, you're not, you're not wrong. So I, I want to ask both of you guys, what movie would you, would you first say would be your big summer blockbuster movie? Like thinking back, like what was the first one that you were excited to go to the theater to watch? I Jurassic think, Park. I, think, I think for me, because I was born in 73 and then I just remember, you know, my dad kind of in, introduced me to the movies and we go weekly. And so I can remember being like a five-year-old and seeing Darby O'Gill and the little people in Halloween. And, and, but it, for, as far as a summer feel movie, I think for me, the first one that just jumps out at me would be Batman. Okay. 1989 Batman would be kind of like the first, first that I can think of and and that that particular summer was a, a complete blockbuster summer I mean Batman Honey I Shrink the Kids Honey I Shrunk the Kids uh, mm. I think Lethal Weapon 2 uh, came out at the time there's a, a lot of blockbusters for, so for me the summer of 89 was like the ooh wow summer is like the the time to go to the movies the big stuff the big draw audience draws um uh that, that that that's that period and then like you start noticing like things are on multiple screens indiana jones and the last crusade was 90 not 89 wasn't it last crusade was 80 was it 89 oh, 89 89 okay so that would have been that summer also so that's Ooh. the same summer yeah yeah, yeah batman and, yeah. indiana jones lethal weapon uh two Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Ghostbusters 2. 
Yeah. Uh-huh. Dead Poet Society, When Harry Met Sally, Parenthood, Field, Field of, of dreams. dreams. Oh, Field of Dreams. Nice. Yep. Turner yeah. and Hooch, Star Trek V, uh, See No Evil, Hear No Evil, The Abyss. I'm just doing the top 15. And The Karate gotcha. Kid Part 3. <laughs> and, uh, Uncle Buck. That was a that was a big year and a big summer for films. And that particular year too, I um, got a my I used to stay with my dad's during the summers in Chicago, and so I worked at the Water Tower Theater for like a hot minute. Hmm. And back then, that was Cineplex Odeon. And so, as a you know, all through the eighties, I would just get on a bus and go down to the Water Tower downtown Chicago and watch movies all the time. And so I'm like, I'm going to get a job here one day. And so I did. And so it was literally the opening weekend of The Last Crusade. Oh, wow. And, and so they, the Water Tower Theater had two different sections of where their movies were. One was up on the second floor inside the building. And then one was down on the bottom floor on the outside. You entered from the outside of the Water Tower. And so I worked up on the second level, opening weekend of Last Crusade. And they had four screens up there, right? So it's just kind of like, oh my gosh, a movie's playing on four screens. Like, wow, you know, that's that's kind of that's kind of big. And that technically should be have been the intro summer movie, but for me, I really kind of felt like Batman was kind of the the pivotal one for me. But that's a nice. pivotal summer blockbuster summer for me. That's pretty awesome. Uh, Mayor, it sounds like you and I have the exact same movie, so I'm going to go ahead and let you tell your story first. I got a story to tell after you. So what what made you pick Jurassic Park? Uh, Jurassic Park's just the first one that I can think of that I remember, like, specifically that it was a summer movie, that it was in May. Um, uh, was it June? Was it in June? June 11th, yeah. And I'll okay. explain why I know that when we get to my story. Um, but yeah, so I just, I just remember it just being a summer movie and, and, oh, that would make sense because I would have went, like, I saw it like the night before it technically opened when they were, they, they ran like a, uh, I want to say it was like a 10 PM showing is what I saw or an 11 o'clock showing, um, over at the castle, what became Castleton Arts, but it was Castleton four, five, six. Um, it was right before Clearwater opened, Mm -hmm. um, but I just re- I just remember it being uh, that's the first one I can remember being like summer. I can tell you all sorts of movies I saw before that one. Sure. But that's the only one that I'm like, wow, like, oh, oh crap. How is it that same screen? I, c- I can't do that. I lie. I just lied. My okay. big, uh, it was that's what pops into my head as the summer. Mo- uh-huh. But the first one now saying that out loud is Terminator 2 because that was 92. Oh, yeah. No, and I boys. saw that. I saw. Oh, dang it! Yeah. See, I'm sitting here like all this stuff is just coming right back because, like, Robo. I remember RoboCop and Predator. Same summer, 1987. Yep. Yep. Oh man! Like, yeah, so <laughs> I just um, the first one that pops into my head though, almost every time is just Jurassic Park. And I know, and I like I remember T2 being a July 4th release or like right around July 4th. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember, I, I can't tell you what months RoboCop and and Predator were, but I remember seeing it in the theater in 87. And we oh, lived in Massachusetts at the time, so I know that it was during the summer. I think it was July. I it was in the theater, so. I think it was nice. July. That's the same summer as, uh, I I do believe it's the same summer as Adventures of Babysitting. You're absolutely right. That sounds right, and, yeah. and Spaceballs, because I saw all four oh, of those nice. in theaters that we, that summer. So my mom was trying to get us out of my grandparents' house quite often so that we weren't annoying our grandparents because we were living with them for the three months before we moved to Indy. So. Oh, wow. That's cool. So, yeah. So, uh, like I said a minute ago, uh, Jurassic Park is mine. Uh, I was a seventh grader uh, between 92 and 93. Uh, we had to, for my English class, pick a book read it for like the second half of the semester or whatever. And then for our final, uh, we had to do like visual book reports on whatever book we read for the last couple of months. I picked Jurassic Park. I was really into sci-fi and stuff like that. I like dinosaurs. I read the book, absolutely loved it. Thought it was, it's still in my top three books I've probably ever read in my entire life. Um, So I was super hyped for the movie. 
Uh, my birthday is June 7th. Uh, it came out on June 11th because I had to wait a couple of days for my parents to take me and a friend of mine to go watch the movie at the same theater you talked about, what the theater that became Castleton Arts. And then that same summer of 93, in August, I went and saw The Fugitive when Clearwater had opened. So that was kind of that same summer that I transitioned between knowing about Jurassic Park and loving it. Uh, and then also being super excited to go watch The Fugitive at the brand new theater that just opened. So, uh, yeah, I did my book report. I wore a T-shirt very similar to the one that I'm wearing right now because obviously they did a lot of merchandising back then. Uh, I've still got my McDonald's cup from Jurassic Park that they had at the time. A lot, I think they had four different dinosaurs. I only apparently still have the Velociraptor one. Um, T-Rex, Triceratops. Dilophosaurus? Oh. Uh, I think it was Brachiosaurus. Oh, okay. Uh, well, while we're talking about cups real quick, do you guys remember when these were like the big thing? Like, here's the, ones, here's the ones from 99 when episode one came out. We got Anakin. We got uh, Watto because he definitely deserved a cup. Uh, we've got Qui-Gon and we've got Darth Maul. Uh, these are the four that we sold at Clearwater in 99. You know what, you know what, you know what cup you don't have, Shane? What's that? Obi-Wan. You know why? Because he sucked. Jason has been removed from the podcast. Uh, this was the one from a couple of years earlier when they did the 97 re-releases. Got that at Clearwater. Uh, I got my uh, fifth element cup. Why do you keep these? I've got my Men in Black Cup, summer of 97. Uh, and then summer of 2000, we've got our X-Men Cup. That's a crappy cup, too. Like, that X-Men Cup was, like, is it's, not sturdy. Yeah, it's very all. cheap plastic. So that's just, and you ask me why I keep them, and it's because that's the type of person I am. I can't throw shit away, especially when it's cool movie-related stuff that I got. And I get the Star Wars ones totally, and even the Jurassic Park one, but like keeping Men in Black and Fifth Element. Like, I, while I do like those movies, they mm. definitely don't need to be kept cup wise. Well, I've, I've also, I, I know for a fact I have an Air Force One cup, but I couldn't remember if that was a summer <laughs> release or not. So I didn't put it in with it, uh, with the other ones. I had, I had four or five other cups that I, just, I couldn't remember if they were summer releases and I didn't want to look stupid. So they got left out but uh so yeah those those were just something that i wanted to throw on here today because i didn't know if do either of you guys have any of those cups still from back in the day i don't know um but i think it's kind of cool that you actually have the fifth, uh, fifth element cups because i remember those and i forgot that they're when when i when i think of that it, it literally takes me back to as if i could just see it right right now in front of me the fifth element cup. And then I think that was the same summer as the, my best friend wedding cups. Wait, I think. <laughs> oh, I have one of those. Yep. I got one of those. I didn't remember if that was and summer it, or not. It's, t it's a total nostalgia thing. And it takes you back to that period of when we worked at the theaters and, and it doesn't have to be that big blockbuster sci-fi sci thing. It's just, it's all about memories. It's all, that's what it is. Sure. What, my brother, Michael, he probably, he, pro I, at one point in time, he had a stack of cups that was probably like four feet tall. Oh, wow. And it was all sorts of those kind of keepsake cups. Um, so I have a no, Lord no, of the Jason. Rings one. I have no, a Lord you're... of the Rings one somewhere. So, uh, oh, I do have, I have the Gollum one of those, but I knew that was a December release. So I didn't, I didn't. Might be the two towers that I have not fellowship. So, gotcha. Uh, I like how you're talking shit about me and me keeping those, but what did you just buy last week when we watched Doctor Strange? Oh, what did totally. you spend? Like, what? Totally. Yeah. I, I dropped thirty bucks on a collector's cup and um, and and popcorn tin, but that was and as you pointed out after I bought it, like I don't know if I'm actually going to be back at that theater before the end of the month. But they they allow you to have free refills for the whole month, so uh, that's why. But I was spent that, that your deciding factor on buying it? Or was oh, that absolutely what? no. No, no, no. I saw it and thought it was cool, but then when they said you get free refills for the month, I went done. All right. But then I went, oh, crap, when Shane pointed it out. I'm not even going to be back there for a while. So Yeah, you know, but it is what it is. So Jurassic Park got the most votes. I put up a poll a couple of days ago asking people. I just spitballed like 10 or 15 movies that I knew were summer releases that I remembered. Uh, Jurassic Park got the most votes. Um, anything else you guys want to say that we haven't touched on Jurassic Park yet? Richardson, you really haven't said anything about Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park, I saw... Um 
it was a midnight show that Thursday night going into Friday morning. I saw it in the Castleton Theater. They specifically had a sound system upgraded, uh, I think DTS. Yep. Uh, whatever the middle theater was, Theater 2. Theater uh, 2. Or 4 or 5. It would have been 5. Theater 5. because it was the At the time, it was 5, yeah. Right, yeah. And they had the same thing inside the mall at Cinema 1. But I saw it in the parking lot that opening night, the Thursday before. Um, no, Jurassic Park is definitely one of those those films because it was epic. It was it was new. It was and it was like awe. And I remember the seats rattling, you know, with certain scenes. And it was a big deal and very worthy of its success. So, like I know that I hold on to things a lot more than most people do. I'm a lot. I don't know. Emotional ish is the word, but like. Even now, when I watch the scene where the dinosaurs are revealed for the first time and it's that shot looking through the front of the Jeep as Alan is standing up, like, I still, like, I have all the feels at, at how epic that was for a moment. It, like, I, it takes me back to watching it for the first time and just how it felt experiencing that. Right. Well, I mean, it, and it's hard to believe Man, that's gonna be tw- twenty nine years. Yeah, it's a long time. Twenty nine years, and it's just like, boy, we have been here for a while now. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, we have. Oh my God! But yeah, that's definitely up there as a top summer blockbuster core for sure. So some of the other ones that were high up on the voting, I'm gonna name off a couple of them. We can touch on whichever ones you want to. Uh, Independence Day was second. Die Hard was third. Uh, the Dark Knight is up there. Uh, Jaws, The Mummy, The Fugitive, um, uh, Terminator 2 was one of the ones that I had put on there. Any of those like have really solid memories for you guys for being summer movies? Um, yeah. Uh, Independence Day for you, Jay Bird? Yeah, Independence Day. Yep. Independence Day was, you know, of course, working at the theater at the time. And it just, I mean, it was before the ga- uh, the galaxy opened, uh, and so all the business was still filtered through Clearwater. And I just remember we had four, five, six screens of Independence Day. We were just selling out left and right. I mean, it was busy, and that was back in the day where you had like you know three hundred and seventy five seats in an auditorium, you know, or two hundred and sixty or so mm-hmm. compared to today. And so you pack the people in. But I just remember all weekend and just that summer just packing that movie and it was just crazy and and even at the time watching that movie there's so many cheesy moments even in 1996 they were just in your face cheesy moments of that movie but for some reason the country just everybody went to see that and it's just very memorable as a summer blockbuster oh yeah i um to my brother dave i called him and we were talking right before we got on this um, this call and him and I were talking and I was telling him about what our, our topic was this evening. And he goes, you should bring up 1996 at Clearwater. He goes, Mission Impossible and Twister taking up eight out of the 12 screens and the, just sell out after sell out hours in advance. The people wrapped around the building all the way back towards the dumpster, just sitting there literally lining up and you couldn't find anywhere to park because of block party and because of Clearwater. And he was like 96. He goes, that was my first summer there. And it was just absolutely crazy. crazy. Dude, and that's, know, that's go ahead. Go ahead. You know, I don't know if you saw the picture I posted the other day. It was a picture of my on Mother's Day and me and my mom. And it was my graduation picture. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so that day, Literally that day, and I think it was a Saturday, I had to work that evening. Oh, wow. I didn't didn't request off for some reason because we were so busy with the movies. And um, I, right after graduation at like five something, I had to go straight. I went to straight to work. Wow. That's insane. it, it, It was really weird. Like I didn't have a problem with that. It's because I loved the job and I loved doing what I did back then. And and, you know, it's kind of like, hey, we graduated. We got to pay the bills now. So sure. 
But that was during that Mission Impossible Twister May period of graduating from Butler. That's awesome, man. And I thought uh, about those. Whenever I think about graduating from Butler, I think that period of Twister and Mission Impossible. Which is awesome. Uh, on the on the poll, Jason Mayer, you suggested Mission Impossible, which I couldn't believe I forgot because I really enjoyed that summer movie. Uh, our friend Nick Joy suggested uh, Twister, which I couldn't believe I forgot that because that's an amazing summer blockbuster. That was also the same summer 96 was when we got The Rock, the Michael Bay of all summer movies. Like, 96 had, had some really solid movies. They did. Yeah, I, I remember I went with... Uh, so before I could work at a movie theater, I used to follow... When my mom or when my dad and my brother worked at the theater on Fort Benjamin Harrison, I used to go with them to work and watch whatever movie and then get driven home. Once Dave went to Clearwater and he became a manager, I used to go to work with him and then watch two or three, four movies, depending on however long I could get fit, in, fit them in. Mm -hmm. I'd sit there and I'd look at the schedule. And I'd be like, well, when this one ends, I can go right into this one. And that one ends, I can go right over here. And um, and so I used to every now and then spend an entire night at Clearwater and bounce from theater to theater. And I remember watching Twister, Mission Impossible, and Dragonheart all in the same night. Oh, right. wow. Oh, my gosh. I haven't even thought oh. of that movie forever. I love that movie, man. Sean like, Connery. It's such, a silly, it's such a silly sci-fi fantasy film, but yeah, I love that movie. It's got a special place in my heart. Uh, but yeah, I remember one night watching those three, and I was just like, oh, this is so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but like, that was, you know, you were listing off, I forgot, what was the, the movie that you mentioned? So, uh, Die Hard, Dark Knight, Jaws, The Mummy, The Fugitive. No, kind of going back to 96 is just kind oh, of an yeah. example. And we, we can definitely peel off ones from other years and whatnot and such. Mm -hmm. But kind of my whole, when, when you had put out the post and I kind of started talking with some of the others in the room and whatnot. Uh -huh. Part of the fun of the summer is you've got those typical blockbuster movies that you know are going to be huge. Yep. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But not so much today, but more so back then, then you had these surprise hits, movies that you didn't expect to do anything, but caught on probably because everything else was selling out. So people would spill over to something sure. else. And so, you know, if you look at that, that, that example of, of the, the summer of 96, not that it was the greatest film ever, but it, it sold and found an audience. That was John Travolta's Phenomenon. That oh, wow. Okay. Independence Day. And because Independence Day was selling out, it, it was a spillover movie. Huh. So a lot of the years, when you look at the success of, of movies, you look at the year where Jurassic Park did so much, right? Well, you know, there was another movie called Sleepless in Seattle that was not expected to be big by any means, but got spillover, you know, from the big blockbusters sure. and, and such. So that ended up being the big summer movie for 93 that found an, found an audience. And that for me was always a fun part of the summer lineup because there would be surprises that, you know, you didn't expect to be good that ended up being good and finding an audience. You say that, right? And phenomenon out of the summer blockbusters of 1996, mm -hmm. it's seventh. Wow. All Seriously? And you're probably like, and wow. I remember, I remember the spillover thing being a thing. Cause I remember what was it? Titanic, right? Like every time you would sell out Titanic, it was spilling over to what was it? Was it Jerry Maguire? Not Jerry yeah. Maguire, but um, no, cause was that was a year apart. Right? Yeah. That was 90. There was, was 96 at the time. And I, yeah, I remember it's, Titanic it's, selling it's, out it's, a it's, ton and it was just spilling over to something else that i can't because i was I at the theater at the time as good as it gets was out at the time too oh yeah it might have been that so uh, might have been yeah. bond in a james bond movie because i had this huge debate with valerie in that you know i needed titanic in the two biggest houses that we had at least and she was concerned about james bond and i'm like titanic's a three-hour film we got so that would have been die another day not die another day it was like tomorrow never dies maybe Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, tomorrow never dies. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah, tomorrow never dies. Yeah. So the top but you 10. also had um um no, we didn't have it at Clearwater, but also that summer in ninety in ninety six was um uh, Nutty Professor. 
Yeah. Really? Huh. Top 10 for that year, for that summer, were Independence Day, Twister, Mission Impossible, The Rock, Nutty Professor, Eraser. Oh, okay. Eternal. Phenomenon, A Time to Kill. Okay. And then John Grisham. The, Hunch- the Hunchback of Notre Dame and The Cable Guy. Oh, I don't, remember, I don't remember Cable Guy being a oh, summer movie. I remember the Cable Guy flopped, and it was just like... <gasps> Still 10th, 10th that summer, man. How tenth could Jim summer. Carrey movie flop? I don't think the world was flop, ready for right? that movie yet. You, you, say, you say flop, but I'm sitting here going, this still made the 10th most money in the summer of 96. Like, right, well, like 50-something million, right? It, it hit 60 eventually. And but so, yeah. I mean, th- that was considered, you know, you're, you're in the summer. That was expected to be like this big thing. And it didn't draw. It was like, two or three way screens. too dark for him and to do that was movie. Way, it was way too dark. Summer. It has since then turned into a cult film. And people like it, but it it found its audience finally. But it did, it was not back back then. But yeah, I definitely had mixed feelings about it the first time I saw it. But every time I've watched it since then, I have liked it more and more. I've I've caught things that I didn't that I wasn't looking for the first time, and I've enjoyed it more and more every time. But, ben, ben Stiller you know. is just a, a much better director than I ever thought he was. So when I watch his stuff and like see his like little side character that he had in the Cable Guy is just a complete like subplot that I had never paid attention to until I was made aware of it. So it's cool. But that uh, was definitely one of the summers that just, that was just a good time uh, of working in a theater and just, man, like you were in it, in it because it was just so busy and we needed just people doing what they do best, you know? Jason, uh, jump, Mayor, jump ahead and pull up the, the top 10 for summer of 97 because Nick Cage had an amazing summer of 97. His June of 97 saw Con Air released at the beginning of the year or the beginning of the month and then Face Off at the end of the month. So were those the top two from the summer of 97? Or not. Oh, okay. Top, well, what's top, this? 10 yeah. for, top 10 for 97 were Men in Black. Makes sense. Followed okay. By, followed by The Lost World. Oh, all right. And then you had Air Force One. Okay. My best friend's wedding. Face off. Okay. Batman and Robin. Oh. Con Air. George of the Jungle. Yeah. Woo! Contact. And Hercules by Disney. Wow. Well, well see, and we like- can't knock George of the Jungle too much because we're we're gonna talk eventually about the mummy. And George of the Jungle is how Brendan Fraser got cast in the mummy. So I love bad George of the Jungle. Is, it's not a good movie, though. I love George of the Jungle. I'm really? For what it is and for being a silly remake of, like, the, and if you remember, this is the beginning of, like, that resurgence of, like, let's make the Flintstones. and Dudley let's Do-Right. Make, Dudley Do-Right. Let's make, um, what was the other, uh, uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle. Like, this was, like, that weird yeah. time where everybody thought this well, was a great idea. Flintstones actually was first. Flintstones was 94. Okay. okay. Good call. Good yeah. call on that. Because I just started at Clearwater that summer. So wow, they but, waited but you like are, you are they right. They waited though. six years of... to make the sequel to Flintstones. Really? Well, I there guess I didn't realize it was that one. Movies. I didn't know there was a third one. Viva Rock Vegas, and then one more. Huh? Huh? Yeah, you have to look those up. But yeah, but part of the... but the summer '97. Um, I just remember Dra- Lost World was a little disappointment because yeah, while it, it was. did well, yeah. it was on so many screens that it didn't feel like it was busy. And plus, it didn't even gross nearly what Jurassic Park did. So it was a little let down. But it's then not as Man good of a Black. movie. What's that? The movie sucks compared to the yeah. first Oh, sure. And, oh, oh and, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. But then you had the, the, the saviors were Men in Black. My best friend's wedding was huge. Face off, as Jason had mentioned, um, mm-hmm. uh, Con Air did fine, you know. So that was that was a good summer too, because Men in Black was like the pivotal movie that for summer. sure. And I know everyone was just kept thinking like Will Smith just going to make movies about space aliens. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I mean like that had a great soundtrack too. Right, it had Will Smith on it and had some catchy tunes, but some of the other songs on that album were really good. <laughs> 
And you know what? Like, I mean, yeah, the Will Smith slap is a thing and everything, but like, it still doesn't affect how I look at his old works that I liked. Like, I think he's kind of blonde now, but like, that's not going to change how I feel about his movies that I have really enjoyed for the last 20 years. Like, it is what it is. Conspiracy Theory was that summer, too. I like that movie a lot. That was the first time I saw Patrick Stewart be a bad guy. Uh, Fifth Element was also that week that summer. Oh, yeah, and that didn't the top Austin 10. Powers, Austin Powers, <laughs> Ruby, Ruby, what was uh, Ruby Rod, Ruby Rod. Yep, thank you. So, Volcano you know I mean, and Dante's Peak were that summer. Oh man, people call me crazy, but he, Chris, what, what is it, Chris, Chris Tucker, Chris Rock. I'm like, so trying to say Chris Rock, Chris Tucker. I think today, Chris Tucker could almost have gotten a supporting nod for that role. Sure. Today, not then, but in today's Oscar, they've kind of lightened up a little bit. Sure. Do you know who that who that character was written for? Uh, Prince. Wow. Yeah, they wrote that character for Prince and tried to try to convince him to do it, and he wouldn't do it. That's hilarious. Yeah. So uh, next summer, the next summer was '98. It was Armageddon, which is still in. It's it's in my Mount Rushmore of, of summer blockbusters. It's up there with Jurassic Park for me. I think it is literally, well, it's Michael Bay. And obviously Michael Bay does great big blockbuster summer, blow shit up, go to space movies. But of all of them that he's made, uh, Armageddon's my favorite. I really, really dig Armageddon. Love the soundtrack. I get emotional every time I watch it. Like, I think it is, it is one of the best summer movies that I can think of just going to watch it. I watched it up at UA on 96th street. I remember I went by myself. I had broken up with a girlfriend earlier in the day. So what I did after we broke up is I went and watched that movie by myself. And like, I just really love that movie. You know, it's funny. And is looking at the list of 98, Mm -hmm. the summer movies really didn't dominate the top of the box office. If you look at the, at the, at the top 10, really like the surprise summer one was there's something about Mary. No one expected oh. that movie to have the well, hundred million dollars. And it no. had like that thing played for weeks and just yeah. built, 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 built this audience and this following. And like, I mean, I just I kept remembering like, we gotta keep this in the biggest house we got. Like it's two months in and we start playing this in the biggest house we've got. That I hate to nice admit surprise. that that was a nice surprise for the summer. I hate to admit, but the Fairly Brothers humor is really not my kind of humor. Um, I think the movie's fine. I don't hate it in any way, but I definitely I did not love it as much as everybody else did. Um, Saving Private Ryan came out that summer, and and uh, that's a that was a great film. That I, one I, always that always throws me for a loop, and I always forget it's a summer movie because I started at Clearwater in January of 99 and it had been re-released for the Oscars. So when I first started at the theater, it was playing at Clearwater. And I always just associate that with being, Oh, it came out at, you know, at late 98, early 99 is when I always think that it came out. I always forget that that was the re-release for it. So that that movie always throws me for a loop. That was summer. And I remember like it was just yesterday it's a long movie anyways. Oh yeah. But we only had one print of it, four show times a day. And I just remember that print was not at that theater opening day. What? We got down to the wire and we finally got print, finally arrived, got it built. And we started about a half hour later. Than oh wow. The first show time. And so our schedule was screwed for the first day. Sure. Because of the, the late, of getting it late and, and, and such, but was it, was it Bruce that had to deal with that? Uh, yes. Bruce. Nice. Baker, yes. And, um, I just remember like, damn. And we had lines for it for that first show. Oh, and wow. Many people like, Oh, it's going to start a little late, you know? Oh yeah. That is think, crazy. Um, that, was that the same? No, that no runaway bride was later, uh, a couple of years later. I that think. was 99. Same thing happened with runaway bride. So, Oh, wow. Uh, I would yeah, have been that, there at that, that time. Summer 98 was not a lot of the movies that came out that summer were not at the top 10 for the year. Interesting. Uh, the on the pool Godzilla was like Godzilla uh, was like the big one that was supposed to explode and be huge. And 
it did nothing. Like, I mean, it did 136 million, but it still did nothing compared to what it should have done. I wonder if it had more in album sales than it did in ticket sales. Because that soundtrack's really good for a bad movie. It's very possible that they sold more. Um, on on the poll, we had a couple that were suggested by some other people. I want to hit on those real quick and see if you guys have anything to say about them. E.T. was uh, done by Tim Pendleton. My buddy Mike Owens suggested Gladiator, and I know he only suggested Gladiator because of the fact that I think it's one of the worst films ever made. Um, Jay Hampton suggested Lilo and Stitch, which yeah, it's very, very good movie. Uh, John Petty suggested the Blair Witch Project, and then John Petty also suggested Face Off that we've talked about. So any of those movies got anything to say? I know the Blair Witch Project, uh, uh, Richardson, you and Petty started talking about that for a little bit this morning. Yeah, again, that that fell into the surprise blockbuster of the of, of the summer. I mean, it was a huge, huge hit. It was word of, word of mouth. And whether you liked it or not, it it was one of the bigger summer movies. Mayor, I mean, why are you shaking your head? That movie, man, like uh, it just at Clearwater or uh, working at Castleton when it was coming out, we were told for like a month straight that we were going to be the exclusive in the city for that film and that we would have one print of it. And then the word of mouth went crazy and it just started picking up momentum. Well, then it went from being, well, you're going to get one print to we're probably going to give you two prints. And then, and then it turned into, well, we might end up just booking all three prints, three screens at your theater. If you're going to be an exclusive in the city. And so our phone, like I, it, it was it was maddening because the phone would not stop ringing because then it started after they told us it was possible that we were going to get all three screens. Then uh, that's when it started getting released in like Chicago and New York and stuff. And it was a very limited release at that point. And it started picking up all the steam. Our phone just kept ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing. And then finally the week of they went, never mind. It's a wide release. (sighs) And they, and they, they hit, every every theater and but we were still selling out like crazy over you know what time. clearwater did not have it because you did so <laughs> well we were supposed to have it and it was an <laughs> art product uh i, I believe I saw, I saw that movie like it was like two or three weeks before it was supposed to come out no no, we, no 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 you were in the same no, you we, were in the same screening with Jason and I and Chris Schneider was there, and it was like two and a half months before it came out. I don't remember Jaybird being there. Really? I, no, I thought I he was. That, I saw that movie way in advance before yes. it got the public. It, we, we, we saw it. Like, that shit was true documentary yep. shit. We saw and it in I the believe. middle of May, and the movie didn't come out until the middle of July. Why? So they had a way advanced screening of it. There was 10 of us in the theater, I remember. That's weird. I don't Okay, so here's the here's the thing. Here whenever that move when we saw that screening, mm-hmm. it was opening weekend of Eyes Wide Shut at Clearwater because I went and saw Blair Witch Project and then I came to Clearwater to work and Eyes Wide Shut was open. So when did Eyes Wide Shut open? That opened in mid-June, but I remember it being more than just a month ahead. I'm telling you, I'm pretty sure Jaybird wasn't there for that oh, first okay. screening. Okay, because the first screening, Chris Schneider, I know for a fact, was there because he thought he was showing up to watch the Thomas Crown Affair, and he didn't realize what the Blair Witch Project was. But since it was a press screening that we had for it, we didn't put any credits cues on it. So I remember all 10 of us sitting in the theater in the pitch black while the credits were going because none of us were willing to get up in the dark until the lights came up at the very end. So it might, it's possible. I thought that Jason was there because I know Chris Schneider was there for a fact. Chris Schneider was there. Um, I do remember that. And I remember we also ran it like two more times before it it opened to the public. Oh, I guess I do remember that. You're right. So Jaybird probably I went to one of those. Jaybird was at one of those, but that okay. very first one was a very small group. Yeah, there was there was 10 of us in that theater. And I know it was in May because it was a full two months because I didn't know anything about the movie when I showed up to watch it. I hadn't, I hadn't heard that anything. Artisan? It was Artisan, Artisan yep. Yeah. So, like, I watched it having never seen a trailer, knowing nothing about it. It scared the shit out of me that first time we watched it. Like, 
steady cam didn't bother me at all. I felt like it captured. Oh, it was it was effective, man. It yeah, was, they marked one of my favorite the things hell out of that movie. They did market that, it. It made you believe it was real. And they made and that, teasers. They had like four different teasers. And Dave Lichty was allowed to program his trailers however he wanted to at Castleton. So he put like one teaser at the beginning of the trailer pack. And then he put another one at the end of it that nice. were different versions of the teasers. And so, and but it still was selling this whole like the found footage, mm-hmm. uh, true story kind of thing. And That's like, awesome. and, and I, it, it's one of those moments where I never would have done that personally, but like, it was awesome and effective for mm-hmm. when you did see it. And so uh, I very much kudos to Dave Lickby for that. So, but that that's your year, Shane of 99 and 99 was a great summer. Um, yeah. Oh, well, right. you know what? Let's, let's go off script and just jump ahead to the summer of 99. Let's do it. And then we'll come back to the, to the eighties uh, summer of 99. Um, obviously, I had just started working at the movie theater in 99, and I think that's why I have this love and affection for the year of 1999. Jason Richardson, you were my manager at that time. Jason Mayer, you were working at our sister theater, the Art House Theater, and your brother was one of my other managers at that time. So that full year that I worked every week of 1999 at Clearwater, I got hired the first week of 99, and I made it the full year before I got fired the next year. Um, (laughs) But all of 1999, I worked in the theater, and I just have such a love, affection, and affinity for for just that period of my life and working with a bunch of people that were passionate and loved movies as much as I did, and all of our like screenings that we did was just a blast. So the summer was so much fun. It started with The Mummy. And right now I'm actually doing a sister podcast to this one, Shane Talks 99, where every week I go through and I watch the movies that were released that week in 1999 and do an episode on them. I just did my episode on The Mummy. It was a blast. It was so much fun. Next episode on May 19th is going to be uh, The Phantom Menace. The May of 99 had like four movies that came out the entire year. And these are like the Hollywood releases. I, I didn't I covered Some of the small art house releases, but only if they did big. Like I I covered um, Existence, which is one of my favorite movies from 99. Very sci-fi, but was also a very low budget movie. Um, Notting Hill and the 13th Floor were the other movies that came out in May of 99. June was huge. It started with Instinct, which I know was a bomb because Jason liked the book and it was nothing like the book. Uh, Then we had the Austin Powers sequel, The Spy Who Shagged Me. Tarzan was amazing that summer. General's Daughter was garbage. Big Daddy, lots of fun. Not a summer blockbuster, in my opinion, but just a great summer fun movie. Uh, Wild Wild West was supposed to be that big, huge Will Smith summer movie. And of course, everybody knows the story about John Peters being the producer on it and adding a giant mechanical spider for no reason whatsoever. Uh, you had South Park made the jump. They were they had only had two seasons of the TV show, and they already got a movie in the theaters. For South Park, bigger, longer, uncut. Jump into July, you got Spike Lee's Summer of Sam. Not a great movie, but still good acting in it. It could have been better. We get uh, Our Generation's American Pie. Um, Just great teenage sex comedy for the summer. Uh, Arlington Road was okay. We just talked about the Blair Witch Project. See, this has Eyes Wide Shut as a July release. I thought it was a June release. but So you... Probably went and saw the Blair Witch Project pretty close to when it came out. Uh, Lake Placid, The Wood, Drop Dead Gorgeous, The Haunting. Like, we're hitting every genre possible here. Comedies, dramas, uh, horror films, uh, kids films like Inspector Gadget, and then uh, bizarre shark movies like Deep Blue Sea. Uh, Runaway Bride was the end of July that year. And then we hit August, which August kind of tends to be where we dump a lot of stuff for the summer you know people are getting ready to go back to college and school but we still had dick we had the iron giant which is basically the greatest uh animated film ever made uh mystery men was an insanely good comedy the sixth sense which i would say is one of those surprise ones that i never would have expected it to do what it did just from the trailer uh thomas crown affair uh we had the comedy bowfinger broke down palace which had an amazing cast but really didn't do a great job storytelling Detroit rock city and teaching miss tingle came out in August, both, you know, there's, there's 
a lot of movies that you can look at them and go, this was a 90s teen rom-com drama because they all just feel the same. And, and those are two that fall into that category. Mickey Blue Eyes was that summer, which was Hugh Grant attempting to do, I don't know, I guess, analyze this type comedy. Um, Universal Soldier, The Return was in August. And then In Too Deep, uh, which I think is a fantastic film, uh, ending with The 13th Warrior, which after four years of sitting on a, uh, a studio shelf, finally saw the light of day and the astronaut's wife. So not a good, not a good ending to the summer of 99, but there are just so many great movies in different genres that came out that summer. Are there any of them that you guys actually love? You went through so many just now. <laughs> I did. And here's the funny thing. Like I just went through, I don't know, like 40 films right there at the end of the episode. When we talk about what's coming out this summer, there's only like 14 movies coming out this summer. Like wow. it's, it's kind of a difference that this last 20, 25 years has made in film releasing. Like that was like a 40 movie summer. Like every weekend you were getting two or three options for what you could go see. Nowadays, pretty much every weekend, there's one big blockbuster that comes out and, and not much else. So got streaming and stuff now. Yep. Content, yeah. So but but it, but it, but it may be a good thing because now maybe movies can hang a little bit and make some money. Like, for example, you look at um, the Michelle Chow movie. You, you know? uh, yeah, I want to see the Michelle Yeoh movie, uh, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Right. It's it's like, sure. it's got some legs, you know what I mean? And whereas with they were releasing 50 million things a week, you know, but anyways, that's a whole different story. That's, that's a whole other tangent to uh, go on. I think for me, with, with 99, it's a memorable summer. It was uh, that Memorial weekend with Star Wars and, and Notting Hill and, and stuff was just insanely crazy. But kind of, you know, I know you said it's a piece of shit movie and it's not like my favorite movie or anything like that. But yet, like General's Daughter was a surprise hit. It was a spillover movie. And we sold the hell out of that at, at, at Clearwater. It was a hundred million dollar plus picture. And, uh, that's and that's one that I'm looking forward to. Like, I, you know, I'll be rewatching it in like two or three weeks uh, and I'm looking forward to rewatching it because I, I just I don't know. I. I know it's about like the general's daughter that gets murdered and like she's tied up and raped or whatever. So like I've never gone back and rewatched it because I didn't like it the first time. So I'm, I'm very interested to see if I change my opinion when I, when I rewatch it here in a couple of weeks. But you got, you know, Notting Hill. Well, I don't think it was supposed to be that big. It turned out to have legs and, and did very well. That was a very nice surprise. Um, that trailer was really well cut together. Yes. Um, the original American pie. Um, even, I mean, Big Daddy was a huge hit, $163 million. That, that was, that's huge. That's a lot of people coming <laughs> to the movies, you know? For sure. Um, Austin Powers was a, n no one knew it was going to be as big as what it was. Right. You knew it was going to do better than the first, but 200 plus million? No, no one thought that. But I think the, the, the big surprise and, and, gift to all of us was the sixth sense oh yeah no one knew that that movie was going to be what it was and it, it's just it, just excellent cinema and mm -hmm. just what a nice surprise what a, a perfect surprise gem we remember we saw that movie i don't know like a week or two before everyone else got to see it and we were just watching it and i'm like this is special mm -hmm. like, this is this is a good movie. Still didn't think it was going to be as big as what it was. But sure. like, this one's going to be okay. It'll get an yep. audience. Not nearly have the legs it did. So for me, the winner that year was Sixth Sense because it was a nice surprise and it was a big blockbuster. For sure. Mayor, what were you about to say? I was going to say with the Sixth Sense, one of the amazing things was so many people didn't ruin it. Like, yeah. It was such a huge thing to be like, don't you fucking say a word. Like it was like nobody was nobody was okay with ruining that movie for anybody. It was everybody was quiet. Everybody was like, no, you just need to go see it. Just and go you see have it. Social media then. 
Like, yep. well, no, no, but but there was a concentrated effort, man. Like, oh, sure. like, because like even back then, it like there were things that happened in movies, and people had no problems ruining it for anybody. But mm-hmm. somehow, M. Night wrote that movie in such a perfect way that everybody who saw it, like you said, this is something Out of respect. Special. Yep, and we're gonna keep our mouths shut oh, and just yeah. tell everybody go watch oh, yeah. the movie. Mm-hmm. Like it, it was just unreal, like how 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 careful everybody was after they saw it, so that they wouldn't ruin it for other people. It, it's it's one of those few moments, um, working and seeing movies that like had a special moment for me because like along with like 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 Blair Witch, Blair Witch was kind of cool because. It you know it was one of those things where like the hype got like to do the fun stuff that we did at, at Castleton by putting the the sticks out and building mm-hmm. the little building the the stick figures and stuff like that we were we had fun with that and so like I just remember that being something cool but like as far as just like a movie going experience like Sixth Sense was on a different level for sure and it was just it was just a really cool thing because. And for something that opened, what it opened at second place the first week, and then the second week it went at, like I, I want to say it opened at second, and then it went to first, and then just stayed no. there, Can't make it and more, just stayed more, at first more. for a long, long, long time, and then it even dropped a little bit, but then it came back up again at some point or something crazy like that. It was just, um, besides that, I would say everybody expected episode one to be what it for was. Sure money wise like so but like the mummy for me uh, is the other oh, yeah. one that, that summer that was just like and and we've talked about it on previous podcasts it's it's just it's such a solid movie and i need fun. to watch that i need to watch that again you do it's it holds fun. up it from really beginning to up. end so like um i will say that the general starter i I would like to watch that one again. I remember liking it when I saw it in the theater. Mm. Um, but I don't, I can't tell you, like I can remember parts of the trailer. Sure. From the movie, but I, and I can remember the, like you said, the main plot point is there's a dead general's daughter. Yeah. And, but besides that, no clue. No, cl- I don't remember anything about it, but um I seem to just remember being really disappointed in like what the ending was. Like I just when 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 things got revealed at the end, I kind of remember being like, I don't I don't buy this. I don't I don't believe that this would have played out the way that they're trying to make me say it did. And I think that it, again, I only ever watched it the one time. So hopefully, when I watch it this time, I don't have like in a couple of weeks, I don't have the same feeling. But yeah, definitely definitely needs to be revisited. Uh, so earlier today, my buddy John Petty and I uh, on the chat boards uh, were having a conversation, and he made the point that when he was voting, he would not vote for any of the 80s movies, even though he liked them. He felt like they weren't ones that he was excited about because he never saw them in the theaters. Like, so he couldn't consider them like summer blockbusters to him. And it got me thinking that when I, you know, started throwing out my suggestions on the poll, pretty much 90% of them are all from the 90s, which would have been when I was excited about going to the movies and seeing blockbusters. Jason Richardson, since you're just slightly older than me, as we've addressed already on this episode, do you remember, other than Batman, any time in the 80s that you had that feeling where like you just really were excited about going to see a summer blockbuster? Um, yeah, but like as a kid... Like, I remember when E.T. was out, I remember okay. going to see E.T. multiple times at the theater during the summer, because it opened in June of 82. And it was a big deal. And it was a, an event movie, but I wasn't really tying it with the summer. It was just a movie that I really liked that... Okay. I don't think at that point I kind of had tied E.T. with summer, you know, okay. I mean, although it sure. was warm at the time, but E.T. played the theaters for like over a year. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it, and it did well, like all through its whole run. It, it You know, so for me, E.T. just kind of 
covered all of 92 and part of, of 83. Nice. So I don't really think it of it as a summer, summer movie, but I know it came out in the summer. Right. But I don't, back then, I just wasn't associating movies with seasons. Okay. Um, but, 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 you know, when I, I think about it, though, I do remember around that period, like movies that came out around that time that okay. came out. So, like, you had Poltergeist. Okay. In the summer of 82. That was a big deal. And you had the movie uh, Zapped with Scott Bayo and William. <laughs> wow. So at, the, at the Lafayette Square General Cinema, they had on the marquee Poltergeist Zapped ET. That's funny. At Lafayette Square, three through five. That's hilarious. So it was just kind of, that's a very memorable period for me. And then knowing that all those came out the same, around, you know, sure. around, around the same summer, you know, but, but again, for me, it wasn't, I mean, I'm trying to look at a list here. It, it, for me, I didn't really associate summer blockbuster stuff until, I mean, I'm looking here at like, Batman really was like, that pivotal point for me but like previous year the number one movie 1988 and it was a summer i remember seeing it opening weekend in chicago at the mcclurk court theater 70 millimeter who framed roger rabbit that nice was a, that was the big movie of the year it was the top film of the year and but like still i kind of you know i don't think of it as summer okay and like none of the way- start go ahead I was going to say, that's the way I felt about Die Hard. I didn't vote for it as that way because I never got excited about it because, sure. like, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't associate it with Summer, just like Jay Bird's talking about. Like, Die Hard wasn't that way for me. Um, one of the main reasons why I remember T2 being a summer movie was because, uh, like, it's very vividly, that came out right around the same time as Naked Gun 33 mm-hmm. and a third. I think I think you're right um, because my dad took me to see both of those and like my dad never took me to see movies like I went to the theater with him sure but like he specifically took me to first run like and we ran he ran that second uh, second run theater on the fort whereas he actually took me to a first run theater and it was because like both my brothers and my mom were back in Massachusetts for a wedding so like he had a whole week he had to like it was just him and I in the house and it was like he was finding ways to entertain me I guess nice. so it's one of the few times I remember my dad actually taking me to see something and uh so he took me to see both of those uh within like and I saw both of them at Lowe's cherry tree okay uh, and I and Wait, I remember so you, said, you said so Terminator 2 and what was the one before that Naked Gun 33 and a third 33 okay 33 and a third okay but yeah, so he took me to see both of those at Lowe's Cherry Tree, and um, and uh, after Terminator Two, he took me to Comic Carnival as well over there on East Washington, and uh, like what is that Midhoffer? Yep. Is, there, is that is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah Midhoffer, yeah, Midhoffer and uh, Tenth, like Tenth, yeah, Midhoffer. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So like he took me over there right after Terminator Two, and and but yeah, so it was just it was just one of those memories that sticks into my head, and like I said being out in uh, Massachusetts for those three months and remembering all those movies my mom took me to. So sure. like, those are the ones that stick out in my head the most, but yeah, well, I didn't I'm- vote for Die Hard at all or a couple of the other ones like Jaws because I don't remember ever seeing, I don't remember when I watched them. I don't, and it was never something I was excited oh, about I'm from that aspect. The opposite. I'm comp- and that, that was part of, what I was talking to John Petty and I got engaged with, we were talking about Die Hard. I'll, I'll, I got to share something with you about that, but real yeah. quick on, on Terminator 2, I'll tell you, I remember Terminator 2, it was the summer of 92. It was like 91 July weekend or something. It was 91. Oh, 91, my bad. 91, my bad. Yeah. <clears throat> and I worked at uh, General Summit Eastgate at the time and we did not get Terminator 2. It opened up at Lowe's Cherry Tree Instead, we got Problem Child. 
or problem okay. child two, whatever, whatever problem child one or two, whatever one it was. I okay. feel like that probably would have been two. I think the first one was either like 89, 88, maybe. So it was the sequel then. And it's, here we are. We open mm-hmm. problem child two and it just does so, so, and everybody's down the street watching Terminator two. We were pissed because at that time you didn't get all the movies you split with the competition, right? Yep. And it was just like, damn, how do we just, man, we lost out on a lot of good movies, but that's what I think of Terminator 2. I think of me being pissed that we didn't get that. Um, so anyways, that's but hilarious. going back to Die Hard, I'm the complete opposite of Jason. I can remember specifically everything, that whole moment, that whole period and whatnot. That was the summer of 88. It was July when that came out. And again, I was staying with my dad in Chicago during the summers at that period. And so my dad got a hold of some free tickets and um, it was for Die Hard. And Die Hard wasn't expected to be some big blockbuster or anything. It was just the guy from Moonlighting starring in this somewhat action picture. And it's kind of like, how's he going to pull this off? You know what I mean? He's kind of funny, you know? And so we ended up going to see this movie and it was some theater off Michigan Avenue, downtown, and it was an old school theater with a 70 millimeter. Oh, wow. And so this is like a week or so before it's supposed to roll out. We go see this film and our, we, our socks are just completely blown off. We are just on this roller coaster ride. And again, it's one of those moments, here we are, it's the second Bruce Willis movie that we've mentioned tonight that was just a surprise. Like no one had any expectation with this movie whatsoever, but we in the midst of of watching that film knew we were watching something special and it would find its audience once it was released and word of mouth would get out and who would have ever guessed this guy from Moonlighting could play off this action film. That's awesome. And then it had legs and, 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 and it was, it wasn't even close to do it. It didn't even do a hundred million dollars. And but it 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 did well enough at the theater to once it was released on video, it it found a bigger audience, but then developed and they started making sequels uh, at this point. But that was another movie that was just very special at the time. You knew you were watching something that was always going to be respected and and well liked by people. The best action movie of all time. I I can't argue with that statement. And someone made the comment the other day of what made that movie so special. And it was like John McClane was the hero of the movie, but he was more humanized because he was, he got hurt and he was scared Mm -hmm. and he had emotion and feelings and brought humor to that. I mean, that's something we I can't really think what you've seen previous to that. And that's a part of what made that movie special, that it, it had all of those emotions and feelings in it. For sure. Because one of those it's that's one of those movies that I can't wait until my kids are old enough and mature enough that I can watch that with them. Like literally because of the fact that it is my favorite action movie of all time. And, 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 and like you said, Shane, you can't really argue it. Other people could have other opinions, but sure. you're, like, you can't go. No, it's not. You could sure. say, I don't agree with you, but you can't just definitively say you're wrong on that one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Easily. Cause I mean, like I, I just like throwing out, like, I think John wick is a phenomenally perfect movie and I absolutely enjoy it. But if you were to make me choose between Die Hard and John Wick, I would I I, I would have a hard time, and I uh, see I, I just don't even know. Like I don't know if I could say John Wick is better than Die Hard, but I also I, I love both of them in the same way for the most part. So I, I can't argue with anybody who ever says that Die Hard is the best action movie ever. Because what year I were you born? I was born in eighty. Eighty. And then when did you saw Die Hard at home on video or something first? Yep. Probably about 92-ish. I probably saw it at home on video. Did you see John Wick in the theaters? I saw John Wick in the theaters. Okay, that's the reason why. 
You're not a fan of John Wick? No, no, no. I love the John Wick oh, movie, okay. but it's just a generational thing. Sure. Like, I would never put John Wick and Die Hard in the same category, although they're in, in fact, if anything, John Wick probably has more action than Die Hard did. Oh, for does. sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, but, but it, it's just, it's, it's Die Hard. Sure. I, <laughs> you, and you know, I agree. Like, it, it, it's, it's Die Hard, you know? It's, Don't make me show you the napkin. <laughs> uh, so, Mayor, a few minutes ago, you kind of started to transition into the next topic when you uh, started addressing Terminator 2 uh, in 1991. You and I both, you know, very close in age and whatnot. We probably saw a lot of our summer blockbusters in the theater in the 90s. Uh, is there any that we haven't talked about yet that, like, you would like to talk? Like, uh, The Rocketeer is one of my favorite summer blockbusters I've, I've ever seen in theaters. Um, but and, and that's another one where I don't equate it to the summertime. And just okay. for whatever reason, I don't, I, if you would have been like, I could tell you where I saw it. I, could, I know I saw it at Glendale 123. I just and the same thing with Indiana Jones in the last crusade. That's Glendale four, five, six. Like I can tell you where I saw those movies, but I never felt like I, it was like, I remember it being summer. Gotcha. So, Rocketeer. Rocketeer I, I remember that being a summer film and, and it was supposed to be this big thing that was coming out and whatnot. Sure. And it was very mysterious but it, you know, the poster had looked like what, like a, a superhero. Mm -hmm. But none of us knew that it took place in older in in the forties, yep. like in the past. Yep. We thought it was going to be current. Mm. So when we watched this for the first time, and this is the period back then. What was that? Was that ninety three? Uh, ninety one. Oh shoot, ninety one. Wow, even yeah. earlier. Back then. We didn't watch movies before the crowds. Like we didn't pre-watch the prints to make oh, sure. Oh, really? And whatnot. So yeah, no, no, no. Because they had to pay only people. We watched those with, people with, with the audience. I remember going to see Rocketeer, and I think it was a July movie. I think it was a July movie. Can we check on that real quick? 94? You should look that up while I go grab my poster for it. Rocketeer. I got you. Oh. Uh, the poster you were discussing is one that hangs up in my yes fan cave. Yes. So, now, yeah. I, if we could just find how much it grows. Oh, it says is summer of ninety ninety one on the bottom of it. I was gonna say, what does it say at the bottom? Yeah, Wait, summer of nineteen ninety one. I got you. It is. Released. I thought it was May. June twenty first. Okay, June all right. First, okay. So when we watch it, I watch this movie, and I'm like, "Why isn't this present day?" I, you know, back then there was a little mysteriousness to movies. You didn't have the internet to kind of research a sure. lot of stuff, and so you'd kind of see the trailer. But for some reason, I never picked up in the trailer that it was like in older. Back in, back in past history, you know, or older times. Sure. Or World War II, Nazis. Yeah. I was like, I'm like, oh, uh, I was like, oh. But that's one, like, I would be interested in watching again. Now, as an adult, maybe I'd have an appreciation for it. But didn't that have, um, what's Jennifer Connelly? Jennifer Connelly? Yep. Isn't that crazy how that's like 30 years ago, and then here she is in Top Gun 2. Yep. Looking like she's still 25. Looking like she is still not aged a day. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what about the Batman movies that came out in the 90s, Jason? Uh, any of those great summer memories for you? Uh, the only one that I remember being a summer thing, and I mean, it all makes sense from a logic standpoint that they are all summer movies. Mm -hmm. uh, but the only one I specifically remember being a summer movie was Batman Returns because I thought it was just so weird and silly that it was so snow driven, and then it yep. was a summer movie. Like, yeah, it just felt odd. Um, but I remember, like, um, you know, I, I, and so many people do this. I equated to there was a series of storms and tornadoes that rolled right through Indianapolis 
okay. right before that movie came out. Because wow. Glendale 1, 2, and 3 had power. My parents' house did not. Oh, wow. And we went there to get air conditioning and to be like, to forget about what was going on. Oh, but wow. we went to an early showing of it too. Like they, it was another one where it was a weird phenomenon where every now and then they would show a movie at like eight or nine o'clock the night before it actually opened. Okay. Um, and uh, I, I want to say we saw an earlier, like a Thursday night, nine, 10 o'clock showing. It wasn't super late, um, but uh, wasn't that at the beginning, at the end of June, maybe? Sounds right. Correctly. 19th is when it opened. Okay, so it was the middle of June. So, yeah, I just remember it being one of those things where it was just kind of weird. And, uh, yeah, one of the reasons why it sticks in my head is just because of the snow. Like, especially, like, the poster is just the bat signal with, like, yep. the, the white snow all over it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, I just remember it being strange. It's so funny when you think about that time period of 92, like, Batman Returns was the number one movie that year, but yet it only grossed 160 something million. Now, I'm How not trying to knock. I'm not trying to knock 162 million, but if you look at the the previous Batman, it did 200 and something million. So it was wow. kind of a little letdown that it didn't do as much. But when you look at just that year, and the top movie of the year does only 160 million, whereas, and I know you've got increased prices and tickets right now but you look at you know the doctor strange movie that just opened this weekend and it grossed 185 million and you look at just how times have changed with you know with the internet and marketing and such and then with increased price tickets as well but even if you were to adjust the ticket prices and and assume that doctor strange was the same ticket price as 1992 you still it would have still dominated, you know, just by marketing and, and, and such. Sure. You look at the top films and, you know, just only seven films hit a hundred million dollars that year. And, That's and insane. So it is. And it, and, That's and insane. Top, and the top film only did 162 million, but yet today, you know, Spider-Man, the last one does, $247 million opening weekend. Yeah. Even if you adjust that. That's still a lot of money. It is a lot of money. Yeah, I know. It's, it's insane. So it's just funny to look at the top movies back just from 30 years ago. Or, or yeah, 30 years ago. Yeah, Batman 2, Batman Returns is 30 years old. Just how much with marketing helps drive people to the movies and such now. And, uh, and what would that have been, 1990? 1992 is when Batman Returns opened. Okay, 1992. So two hundred million dollars today, going back to 19. No, that's going the wrong way. You're going. You're you're converting it the wrong way. Uh, everything wants to take two hundred million dollars from 1982 or 1992 and convert it to now. And that is not what I am asking it to do. So I don't have an answer for that. I can't even remember what like adult tickets were back then i don't know maybe six dollars in the evening when oh. when i when i was at the theater in 99 tickets were like five dollars 550 and six or 650 in the evening i know when i left they had gone up to seven in the evening and i think they got raised to seven the first weekend of star wars i think that was it's like it like doubled now yeah <laughs> dude it was like i want to say it was like 375 in 92 okay that, that makes sense uh, like it was like three seventy five or four fifty or something like that for matinee maybe but oh but that year though the surprise for me that year Sister Act was huge during the summer of ninety two okay. and Eastgate did not get it Lowe's Cherry Tree did um, let's see a League of Their Own was a nice surprise for that summer of ninety two. Um, and that was also Lethal Weapon 3 was number two. Um, yeah, so that was a, uh, wasn't a big summer, summer drive there. But, I mean, it's a memorable 
time period for me. I, I love that period. So I am looking back through all of my tickets from my past that I have scanned, and I the first movie ticket I have is February of ninety nine for Saving Private Ryan, and of course it says zero dollars because it was an employee pass. So never mind. I I don't have a good idea how much tickets were back then. I know that I've got something over. I've got something in the closet that's got some movie stubs on it with with prices on it. I have right on. Average ticket price in the United States in 2019 is nine dollars and sixteen cents. Okay, that's so that's in that's in that's in 2019. We were just talking about 92. Oh, 92. Okay. According to NATO, National Association of Theater Owners, in 1992, the average ticket price was $4.15. Wow. At night? That's the average. Well, that's average. Price. So that's that's matinee and evening average together. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So you're probably looking at like a three fifty matinee and a five dollar evening, maybe? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Wow. But definitely half of what it is nowadays. Oh. Yep. About half of what it is. But yeah, if I if I remember right in ninety nine and I first started at the theater, I think evening adult was five fifty, you know, I'm sorry, six fifty. And then I feel like when uh episode one came out, I remember there being the price jumped to seven dollars because they were trying to they knew the movie was gonna be big, so they were trying to get that extra fifty cents off every ticket. And then ninety nine, according to this, the average ticket price was five oh six. So and now you add in close. IMAX and three D, which will screw with the averages now. For sure. Uh, so, so crazy. Uh, any any other nineties summer movies that either of you guys can think of that like? Let's highlight 90, 90, 94 is a big year. Okay, so ninety four is the year that I transferred to Clearwater. So your number one movie of the year was Lion King. That was okay. in the summer that came out in the middle of June. Huge, huge, yeah. huge, 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 huge. Correct me if I'm wrong. That that was around the time Walt Disney was doing, like, because I know Tarzan was a June release also. They, Disney was doing a big summer movie every year, right? Like in the summer? Well, Lion King, I think, was kind of like the first where, uh, where the summer, it, it, like they were showing previous to Lion King, Disney were re-releasing old Disney classics during the summer. Okay. Like um, 101 Dalmatians and Snow White, um, to name a, name a few. But like Lion King, I, from a summer standpoint, Lion King seems like it kicked off Disney in summer. Then eventually it kind of crossed into the, the Pixar and, and such. But if you go back, and like Little Mermaid, Little Mermaid was released like at Thanksgiving time. Sure. Yep. Same, same uh, with Beauty, Beauty and the Beast. Was released at Thanksgiving. Aladdin. Aladdin, Thanksgiving time. Yeah. But the Lion King, I think, kind of kicked off new Disney product for summer yep. efforts. Because it followed the next year, 95 was Pocahontas. 96 was The Hunchback of Notre Dame. 97 was Hercules. 98 was Mulan. Mulan. Uh, 99 was Tarzan. So yeah, that, that, and before that, you're right. Everything is in November, 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 November. Yeah. They were all November releases before the Lion King. But then you had also in that summer, Forrest Gump, which was a surprise. Sure. No one knew Forrest Gump was going to be what it was. Nope. Uh, and that, and not a big action film at all. No, not, not by any means, but it was definitely a blockbuster from a, ticket sale standpoint that summer you also had true lies with arnold schwarzenegger there it is i was trying to think of what the big like block or the big like action movie would have been that summer so true lies yep you had uh, flintstones in may which eh, but it was yeah. still a big thing at the time um the surprise that year and summer was speed oh speed was so good speed was speed great was, uh, that speed is like die hard like it, yep. it had that same like you weren't expecting it to be what it was, and you knew you were watching something special. Sure. In the of it. And it still holds up um, this day. That same summer, The Mask was great big. movie. Lots um, of fun. Maverick with uh, Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. I, I love that movie. It's uh, it's so much fun. 
The Client, John Grissom. Great, great Grisham movie. Oh my gosh. Uh, I mean, the list goes on, but yeah, for the most part, I mean, that was a good, that was a good start. You had um, even Natural Born Killers was a late sure. summer release. Okay. Did like $50 million back then. That, that's a lot. Uh, Angels in the Outfield. Oh, um, yeah. Yep. Through that one. Um, but yeah, that's that's that's, that's a solid was, summer there. Ninety four was a big year in, in the in the summertime. I remember that Labor Day weekend in ninety four. You had Forrest Gump, Lion King, Clear and Present Danger. Oh, great movie! Mask, also, yeah. and it was just like just ridiculous sellout, crazy. Yeah, I definitely I definitely saw Clear and Present Danger at at Clearwater back then. Yeah, so that mayor, that's, what have, what have you been researching? Uh, I was I was trying to figure out. Um, 94 is the year that Naked Gun 33 and a third came out. So I was going back to 91. I okay. was wrong. It was Naked Gun two and a half. Oh, uh, okay. And a third that I, I kind of thought that because Eastgate had Naked th- uh, Gun 33 and a third. Okay. And it didn't do as well as the other two. And Lowe's Cherry Tree had the first and second one. We got the um, third one. <laughs> Looking back on ninety, uh, looking back on ninety one though, yeah, like uh, was a big. I, I I adore a whole lot of movies that came out that summer. So that summer, Doc give me a Hollywood list. I like. You see Doc Hollywood? Uh, Terminator Two was the top. Robin wait, 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 wait. You know about Doc Hollywood, the Michael J. Fox movie? Yeah, that's a really good movie. Michael J. Fox is awesome. <laughs> it, it's the it's where Cars got their interpretation. Um, and that was a glass shattering moment when you brought that up. Like I had never put that together. And then I remember a couple of podcasts ago, you said that. And I was just like, wait, what? It, oh, wow. You're, you're very right. That those share a very, that was the same, the similar plot twins episode. So uh, Terminator two, Robin hood, Prince of thieves. Great. Love that movie, even yep. though he has no British accent. Who um, cares? Love city slickers. That was third. Mm-hmm. Fourth was Naked Gun two and a half. I enjoyed the first two Naked Gun movies. The third one's a crap film. Uh, fifth movie's Backdraft, which I I actually really enjoy that movie. It's a solid movie from beginning to end uh, for me. Um, I remember everybody giving it crap because real firemen actually wear masks during their entire time that they're like fighting fires, and it's like okay, that's fine, but this is a fictionalized story of firefighters. Get over it. Um, what about Bob? Never have seen okay. it. Never seen it. Um, oh, it's it's worth watching. It's fun. Hot Shots, which I absolutely uh, love. Hot Shots. I I oddly enjoy Hot Shots Part Two better than the first one. They're both fine, but like I, I think I think they spoofed more movies that I cared about in the second one, and that's yeah. why I like it more. 101 Dalmatians, they are re-released, kind of what we were just talking about. That's what they did in the summertime. Okay. Um, Boys in the Hood. Oh, yeah. And then uh, number 10 was The Rocketeer. But besides that, you also have down the list, Point Break, Doc Hollywood, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, um, Jungle Fever, Ooh. Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's, Babysitter's Dead. Dead. Okay. You were right, Jaybird. It was Problem Child. Deuce. Yeah, Problem Child 1 was actually the year before in 90. I had looked that up. I love this movie. It's a guilty pleasure. It's not very well done, but Mobsters with Christian Slater and uh, Laura Flynn Boyle, John, uh, Patrick Dempsey's in it. Uh, hmm. I love this movie. Bo- Mobsters is entertaining for me from beginning to end. I don't think I've ever seen that movie. It's based on a true story, apparently. Uh, huh. on, on on what happened with the gangsters and I think it's in Chicago, not New York. Okay. Um, but yeah, like I I really dig that movie. It's along the lines of another movie that I that's kind of based on real life events that I really enjoy is Young Guns, man. Like and, oh and yeah. We can go down that road some other time. But sure. Young Guns, I love that film. And it's cheesy, especially with yeah. the like rock motif, like <laughs> score that they run with but it uh, yeah love that movie but anyways going back to uh 91 you also had silence of the lambs oh yeah uh that oh, was a summer release spring that was a, spring. That was a late spring oh okay okay the february it carried, one, it carried in the summer though 
but Hudson Hawk, which I love. Yep, I agree with that. Yep, I have fun with it. Uh, that was a Memorial a, Weekend in May. That was May. Uh, is that the same late, summer as Cliffhanger? What? Uh, I thought Cliffhanger was like 92 or 93. 93 it is not maybe. on this list. Yeah, I think Cliffhanger is like 93 then, yeah. But yeah, so yeah, just some awesome movies in 91, but you know, everybody thinks that certain aspects of their life are awesome and every nothing since then is good. So. Sure. All right. Look at, well, look at 1990. All right. Let's look at 1990. Okay. Give me just a moment. Ghost yes. was the number one movie that year. What was? And Ghost. And it was a surprise. No one expected Ghost to be what it was. Oh, Ghost was a summer release? It was. It was a nice. July release. Okay. Yeah. That's and, definitely um, one I didn't see till video. And, you know what's uh, funny is that was one of those movies. Uh, there was a point in time, and I've mentioned it on other podcasts, where my brother David would take me to the drive-in theater because they would show one movie, show a second movie, and then show that first movie again at the end. Oh. So that if you wanted to, you could just watch. You should. You could show up for the second movie and then watch the first one. You know. Oh, nice! But like Terminator Two was that what during the summers that we would do this and dude. So I I saw T two like. 13 times projected <laughs> that summer because we would go and it was the first and the third movie and we would sit there and like who cares if you fall asleep in the middle of the movie because of the like we who cares if you're staying up until 3 a.m sure. on Pendleton pike not that i would do that nowadays for sure but, uh, <laughs> back then it wasn't so much the issue so 1990 Man. was the um was the year that i started at uh, General Cinema Eastgate, and I started in August, so I was just becoming a senior. I was about to start senior year. Oh wow! And so I remember specifically this was summer, and it was kind of towards the end. And so my first opening weekend of working, Dark Man opened. Oh, nice! Dark Man opened. So that was in August sometime. I saw that opening weekend at Eastgate. I worked there and um, we had a, there was another movie there called uh, at the same time called hardware. Yep. That movie sucks. And, and we Don't had, know it. We used to have to do announcements to the, the, you know, when we were ready to seat and whatnot. And at one night I had said now seating for hard man and darkware. <laughs> and the, the lobby just lost it. Everyone just <laughs> not. And I obviously had to correct myself, but I I remember just kind of I like Dark Man, but it was just kind of cheesy. But it was oh, Sam yeah. Raimi, you know. Um, and so that that does remind me of the summer and starting in the theater business and whatnot. But that's awesome. You had, you had Ghost that open in July, and I remember we were still selling it out at Christmas. Ooh. And then it played, I think, through February. So it had long legs. And it only played on one screen. They didn't have double screens back then at, at, at Eastgate, on the, with, with, at least when I started. But you also had, and this is kind of a special category of itself and I hadn't brought it up, but Jason had just mentioned uh, Silence of the Lambs a little bit ago for 91. And you had, back then, more so of, 80s 90s specifically 90s you had movies that came out in the springtime but they actually had legs and helped through a nice portion of the summer and silence of the lambs was one of those but it, in 1990 pretty woman was the oh, same okay. pretty woman opened in at the end of march but it carried through the summer like it was a summer movie interesting so that's one of those special movies that you know uh kind of came out in springtime but yet it carried through the summer uh, but it was the number two movie of, of 1990, and it was a surprise. No one expected Premium to, to, to do what it did. Right. Uh, Ghost, Total uh, Recall, Die, Die Hard, Hard 2, 2. Die Hard 2, yep. Dick uh, Tracy. Dick Tracy. Back, Back to the Future 3 was let down for me. I know you love it, Shane. Uh, but another big surprise. I mean, it's the here. worst of the Back to the Future movies, okay. but I still watch it and enjoy it. Um, another 48 hours. It was a little bit let down, but that was a summer bird on a wire. 
Uh, Days of Thunder was a May release with Tom Cruise. Nice. Uh, Presumed Innocent with uh, Harrison Ford was, Mm -hmm. I mean, that type of drama in the middle of the summer, like, but it was, it was a huge hit. Based Um, on a Scott Turow book. Yes. As you mentioned, Problem Child, the original came out in July 27th. Um, A fun summer one that year was uh, Arachnophobia. Ooh, that, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Yeah, that movie, yeah. Still I, I, very, I was Still very effective to this day. Uh, I, I have, tra- I, mm, I can't really watch it. Like, I literally was traumatized at, like, 10 or 11 whenever I saw it. Like, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of spiders still. Like, I'm not, like, deathly afraid of them, but, like, that many spiders, like, I couldn't, no. I, I have no interest in revisiting that movie ever. <laughs> no, no, no. But that's but is, is that it John time. Candy at the end that sets the house on fire. I can't remember. I'd have to watch it. Or I Dan Aykroyd. I can't remember who. Oh, John Goodman. John Goodman. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. John Goodman. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. That, 1990 was also the summer of some letdowns. And so, like, Young Guns 2 came out, although I liked it. I did too. Nearly as successful. Um, Gremlins 2, the new batch. Oh, okay, um, movie did not do well. Um, Robocop 2 was awful, not good. Nope. Um, seeing what else came out at the time, that's pretty much the core of The Exorcist 3. Oh, came out in August. Navy Seals was in July. <laughs> Ooh, Navy Seals. I love that movie. Do you really? Here's Man, one for like... you. Brace yourself for this one Ghost Dad. Oh, Bill Cosby. Cosby. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah, that is a terrible film. And here's here's one. I think it found its audience later was The Adventures of Ford Fairlane. Well, I don't know that movie. Oh, that's a good movie. Is it really? Jason, oh, yeah. you like it too, Mayor? Andrew Dice Clay, Andrew Lauren Dice Clay. Holly, oh. Robert England. Oh. Um yeah, like uh, it's a solid like who done it. Uh, think like Last Boy Scout, but with okay. more like with more like <laughs> Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah. And then one uh, last one here that I know you guys will remember is Men at Work. Oh yeah, Charlie Sheen and, and Emilio Estevez. Yeah. yeah, it's so. that's one that. When like in my early teens, I watched it because I liked the Mighty Ducks, so I liked Emilio Estevez, and so like I kind of just liked it, even though I knew it wasn't a really good movie. Like it had moments, but I, that's one I haven't watched recently enough to know how I would feel about it now. But think think of those movies that we just kind of ran through, sure, right? And it's yep. just kind of like that was just so that era. Yeah, that definitely was, a very very weird summer. It was a very weird summer, but Ghost was the winner uh, of that year and in the in the big surprise. But I wanted to highlight 1990 because I sure. oh you know what we forgot Total Recall. Total oh, Recall yeah. um, was June 1st, and that was special to me because my friend, my best friend, and I um, we had just wrapped up uh, junior year at high school. Okay. In our last day of high school was half day, and we were excited because we were now at the point where we could fucking go see an R-rated movie. <laughs> and, you know, if they card us, they card us. We were 17, and we went to go see Total Recall to kick off our summer on our half day of school, and we kicked off our summer vacation by going to Low Sherry Tree and watching Total Recall. And nice. That was kind of fun, so anyways. Uh, Jason, do you remember our one bro date movie that we went on in high school together? Ghost in the Darkness. Ghost in the Darkness. I'm looking. I don't remember when it came out, though. September uh, or October of 90s. Got to remember the we saw that because of the fact that UA was giving away free tickets to and we went the first week that they were open. OK, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, it would know it was October of 96. So, yeah, that would have been our junior year. And that was when and, we had uh, type in class, yeah. Um, Clearwater did not get that movie. That was Michael Douglas and Val Kilmer, right? Yep. yep. Yeah. But see, yep, I yep, can't yep. even remember what that movie is about, but I remember, weren't they like shooting animals in like the desert or something? Uh, so the the yeah. whole thing is they, they're specific, like they're hunters, those two. 
and um, there were there were um, two lions that were the British were moving into an area and trying to build a railroad. And what was happening was everybody who was working on the railroad was getting attacked constantly by two lions and it, the ghost and the darkness. And it was like a myth in that area um, of Africa that was um, that they were like old shamans who like put them, put their souls into these lions to, to right the wrongs of the people in that area and stuff like that. And so it was, it was a really freaky movie. Um, it, it's apparently based on real life situations that happened, I believe. Um, but you know, so, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was, it was a weird, creepy thriller thing and yeah. it was fine. It was very, once again, only saw it because it was free. Yep, so. exactly. So the Only last thing the theater because it was free. Let me exactly the last thing for us to get into on this episode is looking at the fourteen. I think is the grand number of movies that are coming out this summer. Uh, we uh, we had Doctor Strange, Top Gun, a sequel, Thor, a sequel, uh, Nope, an original film from uh, uh, Jordan Peele, uh, Jurassic World Dominion, a sequel. Uh, Lightyear, a sidequel to Toy Story. Uh, Downton Abbey, a sequel to a TV show. Uh, Elvis, which actually looks okay. Uh, Black Phone, a pretty creepy horror, could be this year's Blair Witch Project. Uh, Bullet Train, um, which looks like it has a scene taken straight out of Mission Impossible. Uh, DC League of Super Pets. Minions, The Rise of Gru is the two kids' movies for this summer. And then Bodies, 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 which is a horror comedy with Pete Davidson. So obviously I'm super interested in it. Um, that's that's the main studio releases that are coming to theaters this summer. Which ones are you guys excited about that you can't wait to see in the theater? Top Gun. Top Gun. Top Gun. I am excited to go see that on the IMAX with, with Jason Mayer. I think it's going to be an absolutely awesome experience. Far better than if they were trying to make Top Gun in 3D. Yeah. And, 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 and from what I hear, it's supposed to be just stellar. And dude, so. Miles Teller looks so good as Goose's son. Like, he looks like him. I'm disappointed that they at least did not bring Meg Ryan back for a cameo. How can yeah. you not bring, I mean, that movie did it for her. That movie really yep. put her on, on the map. And, and I was reading some article today of like, why, you know, they think they didn't use Kelly McGillis. And it's probably because like, she looks older. She's much heavier sure. and whatnot. It's just kind of like, okay, whatever. Yeah. But I'm, I'm excited for Top Gun. Um, I'm excited for the, the uh, Ethan Hawke horror movie. Uh, bl- a black phone, right? And, that already uh, came out, or does it come out on the twentieth? It's in the June. Yeah, it's in June. Oh, then, um, okay. Downton Abbey. I'm excited about because I really like that that series. Um, and then the last one is. Um, oh my gosh, you named it, and I just forgot it. Nope. Yes, yes. Um, just because. I kind of had this respect for Jordan Peele. It's like he is uh, tapped into this Twilight Zone horror type of thing in today's movie world. And for sure, these films are just, you may think they're weird or, and you don't like them, but they're of high quality. Uh, so, a couple of questions for you. Number one, did you watch Jordan Peele's Twilight Zone two seasons that he did? I did not because I didn't want to pay for CBS app. Uh, okay, understandable. Uh, they're worth watching if you ever get around to it. I I watched Twilight Zone episodes when I was younger, but it was never anything I was die hard about. But uh, because I like Jordan Peele and because Twilight Zones are kind of things that I'm interested in, uh, I really did like both seasons that he did uh, with that. And then the other thing about his other two movies, the trailers have never been what the movie is actually about. I've always been interested in the trailer and gone, oh, man, that looks like a very interesting story. But then when you're actually watching it and watching how things unfold, it's it's far better than any trailer has ever been able to like get right. me excited for. And I know he only produced Antebellum, but Antebellum was the exact same way for me. 
I thought I had an idea what the movie was about when I started watching it. And it just halfway through is so different than anything I ever could have expected to be watching. I'm interested to see with this summer. I've not. And I, you know, it's so weird. It's like you think it'd be fresh in my mind. I can't even really think of last year and even more specifically 2000 or 2020 when COVID hit, like how the s- summer movies played out. You know what I mean? And, and I mean, the only possible thing that we could like really considered a summer movie that year would be Tenet, right? Like that was the yes, only that's reason. Right. That's, that's the right. only reason that theaters tried to reopen. Right. That uh, Yes, I forgot about that. That was, that Tenet was really kind of the solo. Of like that, that was it. Of 20, of 20, wow. Theaters it, closed it, in March. That short period, how I just forgot that. Like, yeah. But um, I'm interested to see, because people are going back to the movies and it still needs to improve, but I'm interested to see with only those 14 movies, like how each do, because sure. maybe they'll actually all do for the most part well, because you don't have three or four movies coming out crowding each other. Like, and here's, here's my only argument that I would that I would go from what we've been talking about already. When you look at the summer of 99 and every weekend had three to four movies that were coming out, you had multiple different genres. So is it better to have four different genres? Th- let's just do three. A lot of weekends had three movies. Three different genres all come out where you're hitting three different targets. Or is it better to have Doctor Strange be the only movie this week? And if you're not a Marvel fan, you're probably not going to the movies this weekend. Like, what would, do you think is better? I would, for me, and this is, as a, if I'm working in a movie theater and I'm trying to get as many people in as possible to fill mm-hmm. seat, it would be kind of like what you just said with Doctor Strange and 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 whatnot. I mean, if, really? you, look the, if you look back in the day, you know, I'd cancel certain movies to interlock if we could fill up an auditorium and get more butts in the seat and sell more concessions. So I, I, I kind of uh, torn between both. I mean, as a as a as a not working in a movie theater now and, and being a, a, a patron. Uh, I guess because we have content to watch at home now that sure. art isn't being shown in the theaters, that it's kind of a nice balance. But it's also nice to see some movies have some legs these days because there's not that much out. So you get people going to go see one particular movie and it actually brings in some money and pays for itself. And, and Sure. And- well, and I need to, I need to actually correct myself and put myself in my place here. Uh, a lot of these weekends that I, or yeah, a lot of these weekends I've been doing on the Shane Talks 99 podcast up till now have, have been in March and April when you've had these multiple three to four movie weekends, these upcoming weeks that I'm going to be doing, there's, there's usually not more than two movies for the rest of the summer. And it's usually one big movie. And then a movie that ended up kind of flopping like um, instinct opened by itself. Notting Hill opened with the 13th floor. Wild Wild West opened with South Park. Big Daddy was by itself. Uh, General's Daughter, the only other technical movie that came out that weekend was Run Lola Run, which was an art house movie. Summer of Sam was by itself. American Pie opened opposite Arlington Road. Blair Witch Project opened opposite Muppets from Space. Eyes Wide Shut was the same weekend as Lake Placid in the Wood. So I kind of don't have as good of an argument. Like I said, a lot of the weekends I was thinking of where there was multiple different genres for, for multiple viewers were in, in like March and April. So summers, I guess they really haven't changed a whole lot. Really just one big movie a weekend and, and not much else for people to go to. But this, this summer in particular very stands out to me as one of the more flatter summers. Sure. Of anticipating there is not a lot of meat this summer. If not, if you're not a Marvel fan or a sequel fan, the the meat stuff, it's just spread out enough to, to let everything do its thing before the next big meaty thing comes up. And then you've got stuff in in between, but you know, at the same time, what's also cool and different about these times compared to, if you say, go back, 
a couple, couple years, years. Even a couple years they were doing it at this time. I love when some of these theaters just throw up some old movies from the 80s or the 90s sure. that you can just go see on the big screen again. I, I wish Artcraft wasn't so far away because oh, Artcraft does a lot of good that? stuff. Yeah, I wish I mean, it was. I, just, I was just looking the other day. Um, I think it's, yeah, it's this month. Like, and you may not like it, but a lot of people will. Like, they're showing the original Star Trek, the motion picture. At hmm. That's, That's cool. This month, right? And I'm like, and how cool, cool is that? You know, and and when they, they do this, the, the scary thing, um, generally once a month on a Friday and a Wednesday or something like that, where they're playing a horror movie, but you have no idea what it is. And it's five oh. bucks. Oh, it's huh. AMC thrills and chills is what it's called. Interesting. And so you don't know, all you have is the runtime. But you hmm. don't know what movie it's going to be. And so you go and then like, it's like, oh, it's this. So I've been twice now. And I saw uh, the first one was um, Halloween 2018. Okay. And uh, then it was um, the next one I saw was um, what's the one where um, the horror movie where the chicks on the bed and like the spirit is hovered over her the haunting and, and she's haunted in the house with the spirit and um um can you give me an actress oh my gosh i can't think of anybody that's big in it Ma- maleficent malicinant oh Mal- malignant 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 okay yeah, yeah i thought that was i thought that was pretty decent it but was, that was decent that was a surprise movie for me because I didn't actually see it when it was in theaters and HBO Max. Yep. I didn't see it. So it was kind of like, oh, okay, well, this is my way to see this movie now. You know what I mean? That was that was one of those ones I did watch it when it was on HBO Max, and it was because you know it was late at night and I wanted something to scare me. I don't know if it really scared me so much, but that it entertained me. Yes. The third act twist in it, I didn't see coming, and it just became such a bizarre movie after that that I was like. Okay, I'm along for this really bizarre ride, and it was inter- it, w- it was entertaining, right. but yeah, I didn't know what I was getting into when I started it. But but what theaters are doing stuff like that, you know, and even like they're doing like they did some Disney surprises where you didn't know what Disney movie hmm. you were gonna watch and whatnot. So that's kind of a fun throwback, yeah, and, and whatnot as far as trying to bring people in to, to fill seats and, and stuff. So. Mayor, how is your back flash dance? <laughs> Mayor, how is your summer looking? What are you What are you thinking about? Um, to be completely honest, the only thing I'm excited about is Top Gun, man. Like everything else, just just blah. Like Thor, like, Thor is not like the next Marvel movie is not up there for you. You're not excited. Um. My problem with Marvel movies is, or Marvel content, uh, since they finished with the Endgame, is that I have only liked three movies out of like the six that they've re- five that they've released. Was Doctor Strange one of them? I liked I liked Doctor Strange. I didn't love it, but I liked it. Um, I liked Shang Chi. I liked, uh, and I liked Spider-Man No Way Home. Okay. Yeah, okay. I did not like Eternals. Uh, Eternals. I didn't like Black Widow. Okay. Wasn't there something else that came out? I feel like there was another movie that came out that I just didn't care well, for. Yeah, it's, it's weird, though. You said like six, and I'm like, I don't feel like there's been that many Marvel movies, and these are naming them. And I'm like, yeah, there has oh, been that many Marvel movies. It's like, we're, I mean, it's, I'm glad that Marvel has helped theaters. Sure. Don't get me wrong. It has helped theaters, but I mean, shit. I'm a little marveled out. And it, I mean, it is exciting when the Marvel movie comes out. You're like, okay, you know, you're going to like this. You're going to not like it. Sure. There's an element of like the same to all those movies. Like it, it, at one point you're watching the movies, you're like, God, we fucking, we've seen this before. Sure. You know, we've seen this before. But man, they have tapped into something that just, in in a way, slightly changed the I mean, saved the industry. 
Yeah, especially I agree. Now, I mean, the COVID seasons and I mean COVID time and whatnot and stuff. So, Mayor, you give a thumbs up to Elvis. Aren't you excited about Elvis? I, I kind of. Um, uh-huh. Boz Lerman is awesome. Uh, I usually enjoy, even if I don't like his movie, mm-hmm. I enjoy his artistic uh, take on things. Sure. So uh, he's hit. He's hit. He's like 50 50 for me. I usually either really enjoy his movie or I'm bored out of my mind, gotcha. but it's pretty to look at. It reminds me a lot of uh, what's a Denavu or whoever that is. Uh, that Dennis did. Villeneuve or whatever. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. Sure. Um, he, like, but at least Boz Lerman is hitting 500 for me. Sure. So um, whereas Denavu does not do anything for me in any movie that I've watched of his so far. So um, and I'm usually the guy that hates biopics. But that trailer, I'm I'm actually excited to watch the Elvis movie. I don't know if I'll watch it in a theater. I may yeah. watch it at home sometime. But like, it's actually a biopic where I'm like, well, I'm gonna give this a shot and see how it turns out. Almost all music biopics are. I mean, they're almost all the same, right? Like, sure. you, you've seen one, you've seen them all, almost across the board. No matter if it's Elton John, Freddie Mercury, or go back to the Johnny Cash and Ray, um, uh, Ray Charles, it's all the same. Um, sure. In respect, I'm sure is just like those. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, like it, so. I, I but, Tom it, Hanks in it, so there may be a silver lining there. Uh, and you know, I I really do, and he's my one of my two favorite actors of all time. Sure. So like. It's one of those things where Tom Hanks is involved. I'll, I'll, it's a good director. It's a good actor. Yeah. And it's something that's kind of interesting. I've always thought like I should get into Elvis music, <laughs> but I've never found the motivational f- reasoning to get into Elvis music. Like, I don't know. Maybe you like, should start by getting into Elvis movies. To my knowledge, they're all kid appropriate. So you could just throw on like Blue Hawaii or something. Get yeah, into but it. I mean, then I have to put up with the cheesy factor and all that. I, I don't know. Like it, it, it's one of those things where I can appreciate what he did for music, but I've never, I've, I've listened to some of his stuff, but I've never really gotten into it. So um, we'll see. Um, but, but that's not like a summer movie where I'm like, yeah, like, like, you know what I mean? Cause like if that could come out in October and I'd be like, okay, I'll go watch it. But like, I think too, we're getting we're getting older too, and you guys may still be more kitty kid kid. I won't say kitty kitty. You get you guys still may have a little bit more kid inside of you than than I do. But but the, the exciting thing about Top Gun is that like we that's like a nostalgia thing for us. Oh, absolutely. And and, 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 and Top Gun the was a summer movie technically back yep. in 1986. Yep. Uh, that had legs, big big huge hit then. Um, but, um, I, I guess I'm approaching 50 here soon. And I just, while I like to go to the movies, I, I, I'm not like I used to be where I was really excited w- with the exception of something that's nostalgic, like a Halloween mm-hmm. or something like Top Gun. That'll take me back to like when I was a kid or something. What you rolling your eyes for? Uh, you and that, like, like, I, I got nothing, man. That 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 movie sucked so bad. Like I I I hope Halloween dies and stays dead uh, uh, forever after you gave me that crap movie that I just had to sit and be cool throughout the whole thing. So. I will admit this, and this is way getting off summer. I'll admit this. It had its issues. I still liked a lot of parts of it. I agree. But it, it can't be the same as the previous. I don't need it to be. And, 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 <laughs> I need it to be good. Things that you know, like the whole hospital thing and whatnot. Take that off. I like just take that out of there. I wish I could, that just wasn't even part of it. And such. Yeah. Um, but there were parts about it that I, I did like. But I I it's one of those things where I'll excuse some things because I just like that. Series, sure. <laughs> you yep. know what I mean? And my hope, my hope is, is that they learned their lesson, and on this last one, they kind of made some changes to 
make us not so pissed. Yeah. Off. I mean, I, I, I can admit Halloween four, five, six, and Resurrection all aren't very good, but every October I watch all four of them because I like watching the franchise. I do too. They're just kind of fun, you know yeah. what I mean? It's the same thing, like all the Nightmare on Elm Streets, like they end up getting really bad. Awful. But I but I Awful. still watch them because I have fun with them. The, the, again, it's a nostalgia thing yep. because that was kind of our thing growing up. Sure. Where's what were those that 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 series, you know? So I'm with you. I can find happiness in things that aren't perfect. Oh, dude. But this is so never mind. We can end up talking about it for hours. Um what if, what if they made what if they what is is uh Friday the 13th in 3D your favorite horror film? No. Oh, okay. I just thought since it was in 3D, it was like automatic. No. Okay. Is my favorite movie made in 3D? I don't know. Is it Avatar? No, not my favorite oh. movie, Shane. Oh, Terminator 2, is that in 3D? There is a 3D version of Terminator 2, isn't not there? Not my favorite movie, Shane. Uh, wow. I'm so glad that we've been doing this for Avengers? three years. No, it's Star getting... Wars, A New Hope. It's Star Wars. And, no, it's and, not in 3D. So, like, just because it's 3D doesn't mean Jason has to love it. Get over it. I know. How many, it, 3D, okay. how many 3D DVDs do you own? Or it's 3D like Blu-rays? Yeah, like so, and are right. all of them great movies? No. No. But you no. have them in 3D? Hey, how many how many VHS have you bought in the last year, Shane? Oh, 15. Is your that, VHS recorder still work? Uh, no, we threw, we threw it away. Uh, we tried to use it. And we actually just threw it away within the last year. Uh, we had a VHS player. We tried to play... A movie in it it just didn't work so we threw it away but uh uh so no you don't even I, have I, a now, player no i don't have a player i collect them for nostalgic purposes because one day it's going to be like records where they're probably going to be really all because people are going to learn a way to to take a vhs tape and make it like 4k when you play it through the new vhs player hey that's why like i'm not getting rid of my dvds and shit dvds dvds will come back they're already saying cds are coming back we'll come back with music interesting i have a hard time but dude i pay 15 bucks a month so that i can listen to any music that i want like i i don't for the price of buying one cd a month i can listen to like i mean i I know jason has a lot of playlists i know you've started making playlists like i've got 10 or 15 playlists like i I literally can listen to i get that but look at like did you not do you not have any cds ever no at this point? Nah, dude i got i got uh the mo money soundtrack i got the uh feel the dreams soundtrack so at some point there's gonna got be the a, back to the future soundtrack a, a cd play I mean, too weird like i don't even think like can you even go into a best buy and buy a cd player anymore uh, ooh, i don't oh, know oh, oh you might be able to buy like a portable one maybe That's- and, and, and like, you know, new cars that they're building these days, I, I've got a 2016, it has no CD player in it. And I like literally almost shed a tear when I found that out. Mm. I was like, but they I just, like they, the, I they like just want you to Bluetooth phone. your phone. So now, but, but I find that the phone is too distracting when you're trying to drive and you know what I mean? And you're trying to pull up a playlist and stuff where sure. like you just put a fucking CD in and you just hit the little thing and you can like drive and pay attention and shit, you know? So, well, they want you to use voice commands on your phone so that you don't have to take your eyes off the road and touch your phone. So I'm you should sorry, be voice I commanding. I understand what you're asking for. <laughs> Oh, man. Guys, thank you so much for being on this week. We have gone on so many awesome tangents. We have looked at so many movies that I didn't even know were coming. Uh, We took a lot of great look at the 90s. Uh, I loved everything about this episode, man. It was a nostalgic romp of awesome. Um, I think next week we might do a Star Trek episode, which I know is is not making Jason Mayer the happiest. So I'm going to try to get us some guest stars on there. Uh, to kind of bring some more Star Wars knowledge than either one of us have. So, Star Trek. or Star Trek. You see, and this is why this is why I was gonna do a Star Trek episode because at the end of our Star Wars episode, I called it Star Trek. So I thought it would be good to just uh, uh, segue into a Star Trek episode next. But uh, we we didn't get that 
worked out yet. So I'm going to try to get this us some Star like Trek a, friends. This is where you need like a Dave Lichty or something. Uh, yeah, I got I got a couple of guys I'm, I'm looking at. So, uh, yeah, but Dave Lichty definitely would know his Star Trek stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's probably what next week's episode will be about. We have a Jason Talks episode coming up soon. Uh, we've got things in the works for uh, a band that Jason and I are uh, really good friends with a couple of the musicians in a band. They are uh, rising from the ashes to perform this summer. So we're going to have at least two of their band members on to talk to us, and that's going to be a blast. Uh, but yeah, we got a couple of really awesome, good episodes coming up. And then obviously, Jason Richardson, we will have you back on as soon as we can make it happen. I love having you on here to chat with us. And that's AKA for Jason. We'll have you back when uh, there's some subject matter that like you have any kind of knowledge on whatsoever. So, which is a vast knowledge of anything movie related, especially if it deals with any movies released in the nineties, where you can tell me exactly where you were working when it came out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, All right, guys. Thank you very much for your time this week and we will be back next week.